Hey, today we are back in the office, and this is where I do my editing. Now, it's currently not lit for editing, obviously, because we've got lights on, but we're going to get rid of all the lights in a bit. And I'm going to show you how I edit my food photos. We're going to go start to finish. I'm using Capture One, um, but you can also use Lightroom. It doesn't matter. Same difference. It's the same thing. The concepts, the principles are the same. Let's go through this. Let's dive into the computer, and I'm going to show exactly how I go about editing a food image. Okay, so a few, few housekeeping bits up front, I guess. So... I'm wearing reading glasses um, because I don't need them, but it helps me be able to edit for longer. So my optician, bless him, spent a good three hours trying to help me sort out the ultimate editing setup in terms of glasses, which I'm just trying to squeeze under my headphones now. There we go. And distance to the monitor, which really helps. I've also got a very dark background behind my monitor. I'm in a very dark room. My monitor was calibrated yesterday. I've not, not done it today, I'll be honest with you. Should do really, but haven't. Um, and then kit-wise, we've got a Wacom Intius Pro Medium, or large, I think it is actually, uh, which I use for some stuff, and then a mouse, which I use for the majority of slider work. So let's go through to adjustments. Oh, it's already fully reset. So this is straight out of camera. You can see the background didn't quite make it. Got good exposure. Yeah, it's looking, it's looking nice. Like straight off the bat, it looks good. Now I think this is where a lot of videos sort of mislead you. They'll come in and show you how you got from this to that. And and the thing is, if you get it right in camera, it's not as much work. Um, a lot of the decisions that you need to be making should be made in camera. They shouldn't be made after the fact in post-production. I, I don't think, you know, that's my probably slightly I used to shoot on film opinion of things but but there we go so here's how I edit this is capture one this works exactly the same way as Lightroom and any other raw editing software you've got your sliders and all the rest of it they all kind of do the same thing so the first thing I do is I go down to levels and you see this dead space here that's choosing where the correct exposure is almost it's showing you where your highlight should start so we're getting rid of all the muddiness and bringing it to here and that's the first thing I do. And then we have the shadows. Now these here, you can go, yes, they should be about there, but I do it by eye, because sometimes you want really contrasty ones, but in this particular colorful scene, we don't. And then this one over here, this is our mid-tone. So we can go more contrasty or less contrasty. And I'm going less, because we're going for pastel tones. And those nice, subtle pastel tones. Now we're gonna need some clarity and structure, which is the next thing I do, because it affects the exposure. This is kind of pixel by pixel, um, Contrast. Sorry, I can't really think and do it at the same time. There we go. So I use I like punch a lot of the time. I always check, but punch is a good clarity method. Um, and again, I've gone really high. I really like umped, bumped it up. But a high resolution camera um, and a well lit scene it can take a lot of clarity. It's not always the case. So lower resolution cameras can't take as much. Now we don't use the curve because the curve is basically doing this, but in a more complex way. And I find it's less likely to get it right here than it is here. I don't use these here, the brightness, saturation, or the rest of it. They're just very blunt instruments. Contrast is what we've done here. But the difference is when you move the contrast slider, it moves everything equally. So highlights and shadows move at the same speed. And the chances of us wanting that are very slim. As you can see, we've moved the shadows this far, but the highlights this far. So this is how we've created the contrast in our scene. The other way you could do it is by moving the white, black, shadow, and highlight sliders. But I find that, again, sometimes we do come back in and play with the shadow slider on its own. Um, and then obviously this has moved a bit and you see it's just a, it's a constant like toing and fro now just because I've said this is the right place for it, it doesn't mean you have to have it there because it's technically right doesn't mean it looks best you know they're two very different things so we, we've started we've begun we've got a bit of stuff going on here we've got a basic exposure done the next thing we're going to do is add some sharpening and we're going to sharpening we click on this little drop down tab and I as default go for soft image sharpening too now, I've stupidly made myself a coffee while I was doing this, so apologies for that. I'm going to have a quick slurp. Delicious. Now, we're going to add some film grain later, but I don't add the grain until I've gone into Photoshop because it just makes cloning and stuff a little bit a little bit tricky, and I, I don't need that in my life. Um, now, you can see we've got some problems here with the highlights, where they're a bit bright. They're not blown, but they're on the, they're on the hot side. So... We are going to go back over here. We're going to grab a brush. We're going to start a new layer. We're going to call this layer mash potato. Is an Ian potato? Potato? 
potato. Oh, it's not potato. Oh, we're gone with it now. It's too late. Mashed potato. There we go. Um, so we're going to take our brush and we're going to just come into here. And I have, oh, there we go. I'm using the mouse here, which is not the right tool for the job. Let's get my Wacom out. You don't need a Wacom. I just find it far easier. What I do like is the uh, the hotkeys are the same in Lightroom as they are in Photoshop. That is just some good good behaviour. Capture One. Not that Capture One's always well behaved. They've done some some bad updates, especially with the old exports habit. It just ruined every digitech in the world's uh, workflow. Now I'm doing this in a kind of slapdash way. This is not the actual edit, but if I try and concentrate fully whilst doing this, you're, you're not going to really get to hear much of what's going on. So it's the white point. I want to just drop a bit there and the highlights there there we go so we've done that layer we fixed our mashed potatoes go back to our hand zoom out there we go the potatoes all back and good so what we're going to do now is go into colors and we're going to start off with the background because that is a key key color here we've gone back to the background layer and you see here we can change the lightness you know if you go really dark you get all the grain and texture from the paper and it looks a bit dirty but we're just trying to find that perfect exposure for the background, which I think is here. I think we did need to bring it down a little bit, maybe a bit more. There we go. And then saturation, you know, you can go really luminous crazy, or we can bring it back. And it's a real fine art knowing where it should be. Um, this is what our actual next workshop's all about. It's all about colour. Um, the smoothness just dictates how wide of a an area it affects. Now, generally speaking, on a shot like this where it's only this colour, I'd go really wide just so we don't get any weird clipping or digital artefacts. Um, doesn't seem to be affecting the sausages, so we're all good there. And then the hue is sort of like the the colour range almost, I guess is a good way to think about it. So we've got all the way from this like pinky purple here to this orangey purple there. And that's like the, the range up and we can choose the exact hue we want, um, which is about there for me. Next up we're going to play with the blues because I'm not quite happy with this. Um, and again, looking at the colour range, it's heading towards green, so it is heading towards the peas. So I'm just going to pull it in a bit just to make sure we don't do anything bad. There we go. Just pop that up a little bit. And speaking of peas, let's get in on that green action. Um, and what I'm going to do is move this manually just to cover green and then come away from the yellows and oranges as much as I can. There we go. Let's really pull that in. I just want to... Whoa, too much. There we go. <laughs> Subtle. Subtlety is the key. There we go. So going to just get a before and after mask. Subtle changes. There's our original. Now it still looks really dark compared to what we're at now, but there we go. That's where we're at. So right click, edit with, and into Adobe Photoshop we go. So we've got here ICC profile, Adobe RGB. We're staying in that 16 bit. It's uncompressed TIFF file, which is going to come back again as well. The adjustments, we respect the crop. Um, I would normally ignore the crop just in case you need to recrop later. You don't want to lose stuff. Um, no output sharpening, absolutely. Metadata, I never care about that stuff. Okay, so here we go. Now, straight off the bat, I am no Photoshop Pro. Um, we use digital retouches. So, first thing, Control J for a new layer. I'm going to call this layer background. Now, this is sort of the, the level of my work, I guess. So we're going to want the clone stamp and all we're going to do is just bring in this background all the way over here. There's better ways to do this, but watch. Fine. It is absolutely fine. Um, it's going to add another layer on top of that and we'll call this layer retouch. And this I find incredibly enjoyable. Um, so we press J for the Jesus tool, which fixes everything. And then all we need to do is come around. Oh, we've got the wrong Jesus tool selected. We want the basic one literally just going to come around and scribble out all of the bad stuff and this can take a long time this is just you know you want to go pixel by pixel almost just cleaning up all the dust or the all the dirt that we missed because we we're both slightly hung over on the test shoot day the stylist had just got back from glastonbury and i just been out all weekend so we missed a few bits and that's cool that that's how life goes And again, it's just carefully going around, cleaning it all up until we've got everything as it should be. I 
There's all these little bits here, like there's a little bit of a strand of fluff or something, could be from the packaging. These little bits here, I think, from the box which the plates came in. Um, and this is just like built in garage. This is a really old tray, um, which just happened to be in the stylus bag. This was chance. This whole shot was chance. Um, we hadn't planned the test shoot at all. It was just a let's. We, well, we planned that we're doing school dinners. Uh, that much was planned, but the rest of it, we'll just sort of like, well, we'll see how it goes. We'll see what happens. You know, we'll just. We've got some props. We've got a concept. I've got loads of backgrounds in the studio. Uh, let's just see what comes of it. And to be honest, it's one of the better test shoots, in my opinion, that I've done. Um, and that lack of planning really paid off this time. And I wouldn't normally be like, yeah, don't plan. But uh, it went well. Oh, that didn't work, did it? Let's get rid of that. This is where you should be a little bit more careful and not just be chatting away whilst you're trying to edit. Um, but there we go. We're just going to go around here, tidy it all up. And that is the end of the edit. And let me show you what our final images look like from the shoot so you can get an idea. I'm not going to go and do that all again because I've already edited it once and it's uh, it's quite time consuming to do all the tidying, so save that. And here we've got the um, settings I use. So it comes back in exactly the same way. We go back into Capture One, boop. And then this here, which is a TIFF, eventually will load up with the final TIFF. There we go, it takes a while to load in. There's our final image. So if you just uh, adjustments and reset that one, select this one here, there we go. Before and after. It's a subtle change, there's nothing major, there's no like huge Photoshop going on here, we just fixed a background which wasn't big enough to cover the whole shot. Then a bit of a tidy up, and obviously we could do a better tidy up. If you zoom in you'll see all the mess, but it gives you a good, good starting point. Anyway, I hope it's been of use to you. Um, the only thing really left to do now is hit export. Now, I'm not going to do this because it will confuse my filing system because this is actually in a live catalogue that I'm working on, or session even. Um, but I'd normally go for a 16-bit TIFF. We do a JPEG, which is Instagram optimised. And then we do a JPEG full size, highest quality. And they all go into subfolders within the file structure. Um, I have a whole workshop on file structures and stuff as well, actually. If you head over to tinhouse-studio.com, I'll pop a link down below. That has links to all of the workshops. And it's just all the information I wish I had when I was starting out as a pro. Um, that I didn't, but now hopefully you guys can have it and not have the stressful, sleepless nights I had to endure. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. See you soon. Bye-bye.